Hello everyone and welcome to this video related to transactionality. My name is Michal Novák and I am part of Cisco Connolly SA team. This is third part in our transactionality series. In the first part we have described transactionality principles and general approach how to make device transactional. The second part describes transactionality in Cisco NSO and Cisco ConfD products and how to adapt non-transactional device with the help of ConfD. This video is related to existing ConfD transactionality example application that serves as transactionality adaptation layer. First, we describe what example does. After that, we show device transactionality issues and how to solve them with validation and CDB subscriptions. Next, we will briefly discuss implementation, mainly young data model and CDB subscriber. You will see the example in action in a short demo. Finally, we mention limitations of the example and how to overcome them. At the end, we summarize what we have learned and provide references to the related resources. We can start now. The example represents transactionality layer and works with a hypothetical device with interfaces and VRFs. It's important to follow rules based on device transactionality issues. Otherwise, configuration is not successful. In our case, it's configuration order and dependencies. Convery example application provides transactional interface to the outside world. It's implemented with validation, YAN constructs, in our case leafref, and CDB subscriptions, several subscription points with priorities. It overcomes the device limitations by sending commands in the correct order. Example adds netconf support to the device. Device commands are printed to the standard output as plain text. The example is part of Convery distribution. The transactionality rules are based on identified device transactionality issues. In our case, it's order of the configuration commands and dependency between elements. Transactionality rules are IP address can be assigned only to an existing and configured interface. This means you cannot add IP address in the step when interface is being created and configured. Only interfaces without IP address can be deleted. You must remove IP address from interface first. Only existing VRFs can be assigned to the interface. VRF can be deleted only if not assigned to the interface. You must delete VRF from all interfaces. Such restrictions do not exist in ConfD transactional environment which example adds. The border between this transactional environment and the hypothetical device is ConfD application which is responsible the commands are sent to the device in the correct order and according to the rules. To enforce dependency rule, we use Young Data Model Validation Refref construct. To enforce order rules, we use CDB subscriptions. We specify subscription priorities in a way the notifications for the data model paths and operations like delete, create, modify come in a required order. First, we get notification for VRF creation as it's not dependent on the other parts and it ensures rule number three VRF must exist before it can be assigned to the interface. Next, we process deletion of IP address under interfaces. This ensures rule number two, interface can be deleted only if all IP addresses are removed. After that, we process creation, deletion or modification of interfaces. In case of delete, we can be sure there are no IP addresses. In case of VRF assignment, we know VRF has been already created. This ensures rule two and three. Next, creation and modification of IP addresses is handled. In case of addition, we know interface is already configured. Finally, we handle delete of VRF. At this point, we know that VRF reference was removed from the interface in previous notification and rule 4 is satisfied. This is three representation of the example's young data model found in the example.young file. There is a sys top level container and two lists, VRF list for VRFs and IFC list for interfaces. Each interface element has a sublist of IP addresses. As you can see, there is a leafref reference from interface element to the VRF list. This ensures the VRF assigned to the interface exists. It also ensures VRF can be deleted only if not assigned to the interfaces. Let's see part of the source code of our example application related to subscription priorities. Device configuration must be done in the specific order, otherwise it fails. 
We have identified device rules to preserve transactionality, specifying order of creation, deletion, and modification of the interfaces, VRFs, and IP addresses. To enforce rules, we use subscription priorities and processing iteration functions in a way the notifications for data model changes and operations like delete, create, modify come in required order. You can see subscriptions in the subs array are sorted according to the rules. Subscription priorities are set according to the order of the array. We subscribe more than once for the same path and specify different iteration function. In this way, we can handle different operations on the same data model path. More about implementation can be found in the cdb underscore client.c source code file and in the ConvD user guide. You can find the example in the examples.convd NSO underscore interop transactionality directory, which is part of the ConvD installation. Example details can be found in the example readme file and example source code files. The file describes how to build, run, and how to use the example. Now it's time to see example demo in action. I will demonstrate how to compile, how to start the example, and how to trigger initial configuration. After that, I enter CLI, show configuration here, and make configuration changes according to the readme file. After each commit, you can see how example source transactionality rules. First, let's check we are in the example directory and that the confd is installed. Let's build the example with use of make all command. We can see build completes successfully. Now it's time to start the example. We use make start you can see make first tries to stop possibly running confd and then it starts confd and the example application. As already described, we have populated CDB with initial configuration from startup XML file. This initial configuration is not yet processed by the application. Let's take a look at the configuration XML file. We are filling list of interfaces. Some of them have IP addresses assigned. Now we can trigger subscription for initial configuration and see how the client application sorts out the configuration in transactionality order. We use make trigger make file target. Commands for our hypothetical device will be printed to the standard output. We can see that first, interfaces are created and configured. After that, IP addresses are created under interfaces. This is according to the transactionality rules for our device. The rules say that IP address can be assigned to the interface only after interface is fully configured. Next. I enter CLI with make CLI C make file target. You can also use confd underscore CLI command directly if you want. I will show our device configuration under this container. I use command show running config. You can see interfaces corresponding to the interfaces in initial configuration are present. Initial configuration is also on the left, so you can compare. So now let's enter config mode and do some configuration according to the readme file. We use config command. And then I select port 0 interface, enable it, and assign VRF blue to it. Here is VRF assignment. 
when I try to commit this configuration, uh, there is illegal VRF reported since it doesn't exist. This is refref validation. We need to create this VRF first. So let's create it. And now commit passes correctly. As you can see on the left, application sorted configuration according to transactionality rules. VRF is created first, then interface is enabled, and VRF is assigned to the interface. In the CLI we have configured everything in one transaction. Application issues separate commands in the correct order. So now I delete VRF and create another one, VRF red. Let's create VRF and delete VRF blue. If I try to commit, I get expected error message since VRF blue is still assigned to the interface. Let's reassign VRF to port 0. We assigned VRF red. Now commit works and as you can see commands to device are sent according to the transactionality rules. Since our example is simple, it has limitations. Example only emulates commands sent to the device. There is no real connection to the device. We are using one-phase subscriptions. The subscription notifications are sent after the transaction is committed. We assume the command sent to the device cannot fail, since configuration is already validated and commands are processed by our application to preserve transactionality. There may be exceptional situations when processing of subscriptions fails. In this case, application must raise alarm notification, inform operator and can try to revert device configuration or get it into consistent state. Confd API can add one more layer on top of this in form of two-phase subscriptions. After everything is processed, application can either confirm or abort processing of subscriptions. In case of abort, confd transaction is not applied and application should revert device to the previous state. The example shows it's possible to use Cisco's confd to make non-transactional device transactional with full support of netconf interface. Features like validation and subscriptions can help us with this. The implementation is simple but illustrates main ConfD principles and APIs for such adaptation. Thanks to NetConf, device can be easily plugged into network orchestrator like Cisco NSO with use of NetConfNet. NetConf simplifies automation and programmability and it represents standard configuration and management interface. There is a resource page on TLF site which contains various materials related to the young data modeling, programmability, automation and configuration management with focus on ConfD and NSO. You can find detailed video related to CDB subscriptions there. Both ConfD and NSO can be downloaded from Cisco. ConfD has ConfD Basic Edition that can be freely used. It supports NetConf and can be a good choice to bring transactionality to the device. It has non-production CLI for development and troubleshooting. There is a community support for ConfD Basic. ConfD Premium features more northbound interfaces like ResConf, WebUI, Production CLI and so on. It has commercial support. Full NSO can be downloaded for non-production environment. This is the last slide of the video presentation. The video was third part of Transactionality series. You are welcome to watch other parts which are related to general transactionality principles and to Cisco products, NSO and ConfD. Thank you for watching.